So right here you're going to have more examples of graffiti underneath the bridge. To the common citizen, it just looks like vandalism, but to the trained eye, there's a lot of code to be read into all of that graffiti. Rival gangs uh, will put up uh, their graffiti to challenge one another, uh, promote uh, their gang superiority or the others. Deputy Zahi Sanchez is patrolling the streets of Imperial Beach, and it doesn't take him long to find another incident of graffiti. So right here we have an incident of graffiti on this trash dumpster to this apartment complex. Uh, we actually have two types of graffiti, uh, which, uh, you know, this one looks more or less to me like it could be more gang related, and this one is uh, done by a tagger. Example, and just across the street, the city, even more. Um, and this looks like more like a tagging group. It's gonna be their AMK or TVSK, that's the crew. You'd think that with this amount of graffiti, it's been building up over weeks, but in fact, Imperial Beach has a very aggressive graffiti abatement program. Two full-time public works employees are out every day during the week removing this stuff. It's uh, ongoing, it's a uh, two crew, two, two members, uh, full-time, 80 hours every two weeks, uh, removing graffiti and throughout the city. Sometimes they'll use uh, stickers, their local stickers to represent their crew, tagging crew. So what happened here is this guy, this crew ARD, came out, crossed out this OBD, and put their name down there. So that's why I said when they see different things, that's why it's important to get it off before they see it, and then it's just a chain effect. And then this guy came back again, exited out, and then put OBD back again. So that's the, that's the history there. <laughs> that chain reaction is one reason why it's important to get rid of graffiti or tags quickly. But it's also important to document it Restore it back to normal as best we can. Since taggers use the same name whenever they tag, each individual leaves behind a trail of evidence that could be used if they're caught. But logging and categorizing every incident of graffiti is very time consuming. So right here we have an example of a uh, gang graffiti. Enter Graffiti Tracker. It's a web-based service that allows public works staff to take police reports themselves. So from here, instead of me having to come out or one of the patrol deputies having to respond, uh, the city crew will get a phone call, they'll come take the photo, it gets uploaded and it's categorized. There's your tag right there. At the next job, Tony shows us just how easy it is to file a report. Every tag is photographed. Um, the graffiti uh, sign right there represents a two by two square. So that's how we can tell the square footage of the exact uh, amount of graffiti that's out there. He'll take the uh, picture with the camera, the GPS camera, which marks uh, latitude, longitude. So what that does is saves the deputies from coming out and taking a police report, tying up their time. All we do is take a picture and upload a graffiti tracker program, and that counts as a police report. The reason it's so important to document it this way is simple, restitution. When a tagger is caught, he or she is financially responsible for damages related to their graffiti. An average tag like this would probably run in the range of like two to three hundred dollars. And that can add up. To see just how much, back at the office, Deputy Sanchez shows us the work of a notorious tagger in Imperial Beach. We arrested somebody in the act who, who was tagging the first one here slow. Okay, that's the moniker they use. Sometimes they don't realize how much graffiti they've done. Sometimes they're high, sometimes they're drunk, depressed, or what have you. I know this particular tagger was very surprised to, he didn't realize he'd done 217 incidents. So through the use of graffiti tracker, I was able to bring all these cases forward, um, do a profile on um, how much money was spent, and uh, put the case together, present it to the district attorney, and um, it actually just was adjudicated and the city received restitution in the amount of um, $87,000 or over $87,000. Escondido was the first to implement the, the program. Uh, followed by Oceanside, and then the San Diego County Sheriff's Department signed a contract about 18 months ago and brought along the nine contract cities that the Sheriff Department provides police services to. So we have 11 of the 18 cities in the county, plus the county's unincorporated area, covered under this graffiti tracker program. You know, every week we're arresting somebody who's doing graffiti, and, and graffiti tracker's been invaluable in that. It's the hub. Back at his office, Tony is uploading the day's photos to Graffiti Tracker, where they'll be analyzed and categorized for use in future prosecutions. Then he pulls out the proof that the program is really working. We'll receive uh, restitution payments from the individuals that were caught. Some are going to be 500, and they just keep coming in. 
More checks and less graffiti removal. A winning combination for Tony and his crew, and a formula that allows more focus on other crimes for sheriffs such as Deputy Sanchez.